Anthus Capital Holdings Inc. owns and operates licensed cannabis cultivation, processing, and dispensary facilities throughout the United States. Ianthus recently announced the acquisition of MBX Bioceutical Corp. The combination, valued at $835 million, makes it the largest public cannabis transaction to date in the U.S. Ianthus Capital Holdings is listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange and trades under the ticker symbol IAN. Ianthus CEO Headley Ford joins me live now <laughs> via Skype. Headley, how are you? I am just fantastic. How are you doing today? I'm well as well, thank you. Where are we talking to you from today? Uh, I'm at the uh, beautifully, plushly appointed Biltmore Hotel in Miami at the Seaport Global Conference. Oh, and is that a cannabis conference? Uh, they've got some cannabis guys here. Um, unfortunately, it's indoors. You know, it's, uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous day, and I have to be indoors and 70 degrees and beige and all that sort of stuff. I wish I was out. <laughs> well, it's, uh, you know, the weather's getting better everywhere in the Northern Hemisphere, I'll have you know, but we're not here to talk about the weather. Give us an update. What's happening with Ianthus right now? Um, all good things, all good things. Uh, you know, we continue to uh, integrate the, the MPX acquisition. That is just going swimmingly. They're knocking it out of the park in Arizona, Nevada, Maryland in particular. We'll be launching some product sales in California uh, the next month or so. And um, we've got a couple of, uh, couple of awards for uh, Best of All coming up uh, that we'll see in the press. So it's uh, all good stuff. Uh, on the dispensary side, I think we've opened two, three, four dispensaries since we last spoke. A uh, couple in uh, Florida, one up in New York, and uh, we've done some key hires uh, as well. We have uh, Pat Tiernan, who's now uh, our EVP of Ops. He was the uh, chief operating officer at uh, one of the top craft beer companies on the planet. So he learned how to make the beer taste the same in 20 different countries, and using those processes will make the cannabis taste the same in every state we're operating in. Wow. That's uh, that's yeah. a tall order. That's that's hey, that's pretty good. Wow, that's, that's pretty good there, Ian. Yeah. To for a taster, if, uh, you want to send me your CV? Oh, absolutely. I'll be. Uh, let's see. When's the next flight to Miami? I'll get right on that. Um, so, Hadley, tell me oh, uh, overview. What is the total footprint of Ianthus now in terms of dispensaries, grow ops, everything? What's the whole enchilada look like now? Oh, sure. So we're in 11 states now. Uh, I think we've got 21 dispensaries open. We have licenses to open up to 63 across those. I think we've got, um, we've got the ability to grow and process in all those states. Sometimes we have duplicative uh, licenses, so we you know, probably have you know, 14 or 15 grow and processing licenses across those 11 states. Uh, combined in the growth side, it's close to 600,000 square feet, including our campus down in Florida, which is probably one of the biggest grow campuses uh, on the planet. We've got uh, uh, acres and acres of outdoor, we've got greenhouse, we've got indoor. Uh, by the time we complete that, we'll be able to uh, uh, provide uh, cannabis for all those uh, anxious patients in the state of Florida. Yes, and anxious they must be. Um, well, they'll we'll be less anxious after they use our product. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Okay, so uh, Hadley, I'm just curious as to uh, like, where does your ambition end? Like, are you? <laughs> it knows you're not no going to take over Europe next, are you? No, no, no. I think um, you know, there's enough to be done in the United States right here, and the, the idea is to have a broad enough footprint uh, and retail presence that you can build a uh, brand around the products that you're selling. And then I think uh, other markets, you know, European, Asia, and whatnot that develop over the next, you know, five, ten years, we'll let someone else build out the bricks and mortar infrastructure there and we'll license our intellectual property around brand to uh, access the uh, customers and patients in those markets. Right. Um, one of our uh, viewers, William Lay, wants you to know that there's an excellent Sunday brunch at the Biltmore if you're still there on Sunday. Well, I'd like to still be here on Sunday. Unfortunately, I'll be headed back up to the frigid northeast uh, later today. Um, and I do love brunch, too. So it would have been, <laughs> a, it's, a, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice offer. Yes, and you don't really legally have to wait till Sunday to have brunch, do you? <laughs> and I guess I don't legally have to wait until noon. I could have it right now if I wanted. <laughs> we can do whatever we want these days. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right now. I'm going to go see if I can get some okay. sausage. Stuff. We'll, we'll wait. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay, Hadley, I, I, I'm trying to think of a tough question to ask you, but uh, let's at see. Uh, you, that 409 question was tough. 
That was, wasn't it? Was, okay, sorry, so how I, about this I, I one? You raised $35 million bucks and an unsecured convertible note. How dilutive is yeah. that or how beneficial is that from a cost of capital perspective for the s that, that is an excellent question. You know, there's, there's three key things that, um, that we're focused on in the first half of 2019. One, one is ensuring that we have uh, uh, the appropriate continuity around HR structure and you know, the most important uh, asset that we have are our people and ensuring that we have you know, that all lined out from our acquisition with MPX. The second piece is ensuring that we continue to roll out our ability to measure ourselves, so those ERP systems. And then the third is focused on cost of capital. And we inherited a very expensive bond uh, from MPX. And one of the ways that we can uh, uh, get that off our balance sheet is to offer a redemption note. You need to have the cash on your balance sheet to be able to do that. Um, so we put out this uh, junior convert to be able to have the cash to issue the redemption note so that they can force the conversion of that and uh, clean up the balance sheet a little bit. Um, the the uh, security itself was um, it was probably about uh, 25, 30 percent cost of capital, uh, cheaper than what it would cost to wade into the, uh, the equity markets in Canada. And you had the certainty of uh, closing on the date that you announce it. So it was a, it was a good, uh, good financing for us. And it was the first step in a multi series of steps that we'll do to uh, clean up the balance sheet a little bit with some of the uh, converts that we have. And then um, hopefully do something that's even lower cost using the, uh, the assets that we have as security. Mm hmm. Interesting. Mm. So, the <laughs> not as interesting as the 409 Beach Boy song, but well, uh, I find it fascinating. Which we still don't have an answer to that. Oh, it's a Glenn Treef, one of our readers, reports that it was an, an Impala SS 1962. Yes, and I had an Impala 527 1968 baby blue convertible. No kidding. Wow. That's true. Wow. That's true. Wow. <laughs> Boy, it's something was, in the universe today. I was alive then. <laughs> <laughs> I was not. <laughs> That's true. Huh. Okay, well, Hadley, uh, what, else, uh, what else is going on? What, is, what are the next big steps for Ianthus? I mean, you're obviously very conscious of ca uh, cost of capital, dilution. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. So what, what, is the, what is the big next leap forward that you can talk about? I'm sure there's plenty that you can't talk about. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's that big a secret. You know, what we've done in the past is probably what we're going to do in the future. You know, we, we look to increase footprint. You know, I think that you have to have, if you're going to build a national brand and the stickiness around that uh, experience, uh, you can't advertise. There's no national distributors. You actually have to have your own retail footprint. That means you need to be in national, uh, national enough in the states that matter. You know, one big area that uh, we have uh, a very tiny position, we'd like to have a bigger one, is California. It's the largest legal market uh, on the planet and uh you know we, we look at stuff uh, daily and look at opportunities there uh you know i think you can look at any of the population centers we'd love to be in pennsylvania michigan ohio um so we continue to look at uh, opportunities from that perspective you know i do think uh going forward focused on that cost of capital once we clean up some of this higher uh you know, higher cost convertible debt that we have um you know i think we'll do some pioneering work on using our, our asset base to drive down that cost and then uh, continued uh, continued implementation and rationalization around our ERP systems in all three states will allow us to measure all the good stuff that we're doing. You bet. How has passage of the States Act affected your business? Uh, passage of it? I I didn't know that it got passed. That would be oh, great I news. Sorry, Ed and I, I just passed, passed it. Well, yeah, we're passing. <laughs> we're passing it here today. We're taking over. Uh, that's fantastic. I vote. I vote yes. I, you have my. <laughs> okay. vote. Well, that's a relief. No, but when passage yeah, occurs, would, I yeah, guess that is that how would, I should frame that. Big, yeah, it would be a big positive. You know, I think the one of the the pieces that happened when the Dems took over the House is a lot of these uh, bills that have always been sort of bandied about for you know 12, 18 months. They can now see the light of day. You know, there's no telling if they're actually going to be passed you know, in the House and then passed in the Senate and then signed into law. But the, the idea that we're actually having a discussion around it, I think, puts a little pebble on the scale and shows that uh, it will happen, if not today, if not in a couple of months. You know, we'll, we'll see forward progress in a lot of regulatory, whether it's the SAFE Act, the States Act, whether it's uh, you know, direct um, uh, decriminalization. A you know, anything can be discussed nowadays, and you know, ultimately anything is possible, and much more possible than it would have been with the Republicans controlling the House. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, Hadley, let's leave it there this time. Uh, okay. Great to talk to you again. Have an excellent brunch on Sunday if you can wait that long. <laughs> Otherwise, enjoy your flight home. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. You bet. Bye for now.